In the diagram below, the line joining Q having coordinates negative 2 and negative 3, and P having coordinates A and B, with A and B greater than 0 makes an angle of 45 degrees with the positive x-axis. Now, QP is equal to 7 root 2 units, so that is the length of QP, and N has the coordinates of x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 1, and that is the midpoint of PR. And M is the midpoint of QR, so quite a bit happening here. M is the midpoint of QR, and N is the midpoint of PR. We have a bunch of coordinates known, we've even got an angle. So question 3.1, calculate the gradient of PQ. So in order to get the gradient of PQ, we need two coordinates, and then we can utilize our gradient formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but unfortunately, in this situation, that is not possible. Reason being, we don't know the coordinates of P. So we'll have to use this angle of inclination. So that is tan theta is equal to M. We want to calculate the gradient. Our angle there is 45 degrees. So tan 45 is equal to 1. Question 3.2. The equation of MN in the form Y is equal to MX plus C and give reasons. So look, we know that MN is parallel to QP. Okay, MN is parallel to QP. And the reason behind this is we've got midpoint theorem here. Do you see the triangle? You see the triangle? PQR. In triangle PQR, we have MN and QP that are in the same triangle. That's midpoint theorem. So we can conclude that MN is parallel to QP. Therefore, MN, the gradients of MN is equal to 1. Now we can use Y is equal to MX plus C and we can sub in our unknown values. Uh, look, we can use any coordinate on MN. There is only one coordinate, which is N. We sub in X is equal to seven and Y is equal to one. So it's gonna look something like this. We've subbed in our seven and our one. I've just put it in brackets. And to calculate our C value, one minus seven, C is gonna be equal to negative six. So we have our value for M, we have our value for C. Therefore, the equation of MN is going to be x minus 6. And that's it. Question 3.3, the length of mn. Well, we know that the length of mn is going to be half of pq. We've got midpoint theorem here. So if this is 6 units, this is going to be 3. If qp is 6, mn is going to be 3 units. So we know that the length of qp is 7 root 2. So to get the length of mn, it's going to be 7 root 2 halved divided by 2 and we're gonna get a grand total of 4,95. Okay, and that's it. 3.4, the length of RS. Now, there was actually a bit of an issue with this question in the paper because the memo had an assumption. So there was an errata sheet that was sent out. So yeah, a bit of an error in the paper. You did have to operate under the assumption that N, well, QN bisects PR. Okay, that was the assumption that you had to work under that I saw in the memo. And if QN bisects PR, well, QN is going to run all the way to S. In other words, PQRS is a parallelogram as diagonals bisect each other. Therefore, RS is going to have the same length as QP. So RS is going to be equal to 7 root 2 as well. So yeah, typical an example there uh, of a mistake in a final paper. You even see it in, I think, the 2021 paper, the one with the impossible trick question. But yeah, it was a bit of a mess. Uh, even if you check out this memo, I think it is, this question is the 2015 paper, question 3.4. It's not even there on the government website. So yeah, quite, uh, quite hectic.